In an effort to improve neighborhood relations, I invited this great blue heron to hang around with me for the afternoon. I hoped he would come to see these koi are just too beautiful to eat, rather than so beautiful they have to be eaten. This bird really is built perfectly for fishing, from the feet all the way to the beak. This is definitely the eye of an extremely skilled hunter. And here's his weapon, capable of killing fish much larger than he can possibly eat. Though I tried, I knew he and I couldn't be friends for long. Today I'll be doing the first culling of the new season. I head down to the lower ponds. These are Kohaku fry, 45 days old now, and beginning to show their future potential. These koi have beaten many odds just to get to this point. Here is another one of the many predators they've had to dodge and elude over the first 45 days. A large spider that waits patiently on the surface of the water until an unsuspecting fish comes to the surface to pick at a treat. The spider quickly nabs the fish with its deadly talons and the fish becomes a meal, like this baby Showa. Koi breeding really is, to an extent, a numbers game and a game of survival. As a breeder, I have to do what I can to produce the very best fry. Then I have to ensure they survive and aren't taken by predators. Then, through meticulous culling, I have to find and grow the koi with the qualities and characteristics that I'm breeding for. So many things can happen during a long summer, though. Here are a few choices from the first cull. It's likely that only one of these baby kohakus will make it through the series of cullings throughout the summer to be kept to grow or sold as show quality. This kohaku is just 14 months older. Notice how the coloration has blossomed.
In addition to culling, I do spend a lot of time in the summer looking over and evaluating older koi that are kept up in the filter tanks. This one has flipped a scale on the upper back. This will fill back in over the next few months. Notice the bright, sparkly nature of the white skin. This is a sibling that has been raised basically in the same conditions and with the same diet. If we compare the two though, we see subtle differences, which can be inherited from separate fathers or grandparents, or can be the individual characteristics of each koi. We need to also consider the sex of the koi. One of these kohakus is male and one is female. If we look closely, we can see that the tint of Benny is slightly different on each, though the Kiwa and Sashi characteristics are similar on both. Notice the white is good on both koi, though slightly yellow. The heat and heavy feeding of summer will affect the look of the white. <laughs> 